Okay, uh, today I'm going to talk about, uh, just kind of continue on uh, the reflection of perspectives on death. Um, it's much easier just to show dramatically what a positive uh, perspective on death is, um, as opposed to just explaining it, you don't really get uh, the true disposition. So, um, I'm going to use three movie examples uh, just to show uh, how characters are dealing with it, how they have dealt with it. Um, I'm going to use uh, Fight Club, uh, Last Samurai, and uh, 300. And these are just uh, different dramatic ways that show different aspects of the process of um, the painful at first, but eventually positive experience of um, accepting one's own mortality. Uh, and that's something that culturally we tend to run away from and uh, in terror management theory, it doesn't accommodate for the positive side of accepting it. So the first clip is from Fight Club and I'm just gonna let this play through. No, not fear. No, you're going to die. So he builds up to this point, and uh, again, you see the initial resistance, the initial anxiety surrounding both pain, but also um, uh, the, the running away from death. Basically, a, a large, major part of, uh, of what society is about. So. You don't know how this feels. So um, that's a great, important scene. Um, as sadistic as we may interpret it as in modern times, really when you look back at historically at development um, across many cultures, um, he's really doing at 30 what a lot of men or boys did at 14. And so, uh, you know, the chemical burn, it seems horrible, but it's really done out of a sense of a compassion. It's kind of a... It's almost like a transition, a male uh, male rite of passage, but um, you look to the American Indians, uh, when, when you became a brave, uh, you were hung by your chest, um, by hooks in your chest from the pole, um, 
other traditions in Africa, you know, they uh, sent boys out in the woods and they were beat up by the men and uh, given uh, fire ants uh, poured all over their body. Uh, these are, this, there's a long historical human tradition, universal almost across culture, um, that, that transition um, to mature uh, masculinity. It could be. Um, there's also an enlightenment perspective. He says you're feeling premature enlightenment. What that is is that pain of, uh, of the burn brings you really intensely into the moment. Um, and so it takes you out of your mind, out of any kind of neurosis, and really focus on the moment. So uh, it's, a, it's an initial taste of uh, an awakened state as, as uh, the Zen tradition would say. Um, but it's hyper-consciousness. And it is also um, freedom from fear. Like uh, uh, Edward Norton's character experiences low-level anxiety throughout his entire movie until he faces his death. And this is kind of what it wants to explain. Probably one of the most disturbing scenes um, to see as positive or healthy, but um, just reflect on it. Try to form your own opinion about it, um, but that's probably one of the more difficult um, scenes to see as actually a positive but painful transition, but also he's accepting his death, and that's really one of the most important things, I think, in, uh, in, in freedom from anxiety, but also um, reaching mature masculinity. So uh, a much more palatable perspective on uh, death awareness and death acceptance is the scene from Last Samurai, so we're going to watch that real quick. So the setup for the scene was uh, basically uh, Tom Cruise was having accepting problems accepting uh, some of the deeds he did uh, under orders um, during the American Revolution, uh, uh, the, the ridding of uh, of the Indians, the American Indians, and he's kind of haunted. Um, he would call modern days as like post-traumatic stress disorder. So um, Watanabe is giving him some guidance here. Um, he says he's been haunted by the same things. And he says when he has trouble, he comes to this place, which is uh, traditional. You're going to see this imagery again and again in Japan. It's traditional uh, cherry blossom imagery. And the philosophy behind it is uh, you, know, you sense the impermanence, the both the beauty and the impermanence of life. So. Um, he says, I come to this place and I see these cherry blossoms and these signs of um, blooming and dying and just that process is, 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 is beautiful impermanence though. And uh, this is probably reflective of the Christian saying that this too shall pass. So uh, this is uh, the, the coping mechanism, the, the, the imagery, but it's, it's really, it's an acceptance of death, but it's that's what uh, that's what the cherry blossom symbolizes: life and death. And uh, when you reflect on that, you use that symbol, you reflect on it yourself, and you become more at peace with it. Um, so uh, that's the purpose be behind that imagery, and it's potentially, you know, uh, an approach to post-traumatic stress, actually. Um, but it's it's a way of showing where it kind of contradictory to uh, terror management theory that suggests that uh, death awareness is, is uh, harmful, but this suggests it's actually healing. So uh, that's the perspective. Um, the last scene is from 300, and I uh, will let that play.
uh, this expression gets me every time, but I want to explain, explain and play it through. So that scene was great for uh, contrast of perspectives. So you have the Athenian general uh, coming to the Spartan, uh, looking down, uh, and uh, uh, this the the the, uh, the Spartan and the Athenian. So this is the Athenian. You saw him at the beginning of the scene, very anxious, uh, you know, saying there can be no victory. So this is probably the typical. Uh, what you could say normal everyday life approach to uh, to death because that's what he's basically facing. I mean, death is pretty much assured in this in this case uh, because you know they were outnumbered 100 to one um, at Thermopylae. So he says there can be no victory here. Well, there can't. And then uh, the other perspective is uh, how the Spartans approach death, which was. Um, I, I fought many times, but nobody can give me what I call a good death, and that's what they—that's how they approached it. And the the look on his face was, uh, to me, uh, the way I interpreted it, was someone who's truly accepted that fact, um, truly at peace with that almost. So um, it, you may interpret it as maniacal, or, but his the, the look he really gives. I wish I could. Uh, fast forward back to that, but the look on his face is just uh, you know embracing it completely. Um, that's freedom from fear, but beyond even the belief element, he's truly accepted that fact. He's truly gone beyond it. So I would suggest people like that, um, you know, uh, well-adjusted warriors, um, even even the monks that continually reflect on. Uh, the reality of death. Um, they're going to be really well adjusted to it, and they're not going to be uh, reactive to any kind of fear conditioning or any kind of priming. It's not going to affect their rational judgment. Um, if anything, it's going to make them even more at peace. And so that's why you see the, the uh, Spartan smiling. It's, he's accepted that fact, he's at peace with it and it's not even a problem. So um, those people are not going to be susceptible to um, the normal uh, fear conditioning, um, the fear priming that you know politicians can use. But also, I mean, as experimenters, if we're using any kind of fear priming, the Athenian guy uh, would probably be reacted to it. You could see his anxious look. But the Spartan wouldn't. So understanding that dynamic, it represents basically the full spectrum of human behavior, and uh, I guess we need to understand that paradox uh, for it to be completely scientific. We need to integrate all the all the deviations and understand how um, that pattern, um, it, how term management theory is affirmed, but also incorporate the full spectrum of how um, actually accepting death can be uh, bring people more at peace. Um, if not uncomfortable at first. So, kind of a jagged pill to swallow. Once it's swallowed, I think, uh, I think it's actually powerful for development. So, uh, that's just one more perspective. Um, thanks for listening, and a uh, dramatic example of depth acceptance.